Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Welcome to Policy and Rights, the show about government policy and human rights. Okay, welcome back to Depictions Media Radio. I'm your host, Michael Cloggs. Healthcare. Healthcare is, it, let's face it, healthcare is a global crisis at this point. We have seen how people can very easily th- fall through the cracks globally going with the, with the pandemic. We've seen there are still countries that still have yet to, to get um, the proper tools that are that are needed to e- even combat COVID nineteen. It is a global crisis that w- needs to be addressed on a global level. But first, we need to to focus on what's going on at home. And here in Canada, the premiers of Canada have have come together as a united group. To talk about health care. They're also we're, we're talking about um, energy security and how there's a need for that also. But first let's focus on health care and how many people are falling through the cracks with, with, with different levels of health care. Rather it be something as simple as this, the stuffy and sniffling nose to mental health where people are dying from overdoses because of addictions it is all about health care it is all about developing a system where people don't fall through the cracks developing a system that people feel safe with going to in order to get healthy stay healthy to go move beyond being sick, to move beyond developing symptoms, ensuring that when we do have symptoms, that we have a place to go where those symptoms will be addressed, the root cause dug out, and we are returned to 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 a healthy state, and that is what. The premiers across Canada have, have come together to discuss that there's a shortage of doctors, there's a shortage of health care workers, and the, the system isn't always accessible to everyone. And that's what should be happening, is it should be accessible to everyone equally across Canada, within the provinces, the municipalities, as well as when we look out again globally, the healthcare should be a right and a right that that is well protected through all the different levels of government and systems both locally, nationally, provincially and globally. So let's listen to what uh, four of the premiers have to say as they were seated um, on the east coast of Canada uh, in one of the Atlantic provinces. Bon après-midi tout le monde à ce point de presse. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to today's media availability. Joining us this afternoon, we have the Honorable Blaine Higgs, Premier of New Brunswick, 
the Honorable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honorable Tim Houston, Premier of Nova Scotia, and the Honorable Dennis King, Premier of Prince Edward Island. Lanarab Blaine Higgs, Premier Minister de Nouveau Brunswick, Lanarab Doug Ford, Premier Minister de l'Ontario, Lanarab Tim Houston, Premier Minister de la Nouvelle Écosse, et Lanarab Dennis King, Premier Minister de Ile de Prince Edward. Uh, Premier Higgs and Premier Ford will have some remarks and then we will open it up to uh, some media questions. But before I turn everything over to Premier Higgs, avant de céder la parole au Premier Ministre Higgs, uh, voulez-vous assurer de désactiver le son de vos micros? I would like to ask everyone to please ensure your microphones are placed on mute. Premier Higgs. Merci. Good afternoon. Bonjour. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to meet with the Premiers of Ontario, Premier of Ontario, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island to discuss our collective challenges and the steps that must be taken together to overcome them. The topics discussed today during the meeting, the crisis in health care, energy security through new energy sources and technologies, recruitment and retention of immigrants to address growing labor shortages, and reducing barriers for internationally trained workers in the healthcare sector. While these are all priority issues for each of us and have a direct impact on the residents of our provinces, healthcare is the utmost concern. Tous ces enjeux sont des priorités pour nous, car ils ont and have a direct impact on the residents of our provinces. Healthcare is of utmost concern. Nous reconnaissons que des actions urgentes sont requises si le gouvernement fédéral veut assurer la durabilité des systèmes de santé dans le and protect residents. I want to thank Premier Ford, Premier Houston and Premier King for coming to Moncton for this meeting and for the sometimes spirited but always positive and collaborative discussions. Je vous dis merci au Premier ministre Ford, au Premier ministre Houston. Premier Houston Premier King for coming to Moncton for this meeting and for the sometimes spirited discussions, but always positive and collaborative, collaborative discussions. There are challenges throughout our nation, certainly in, in health care and certainly with energy security, we see worldwide issues. And, and in relation to the role we can play collectively as, as a nation. We also know that we're stronger together, and that is certainly when these meetings are important, that we can have these, these discussions. And we know that innovative solutions are required in many, many steps, because it's not a matter of simply uh, doing more of the same. It's about funding, finding fundamental ways to improve. We know we're stronger, stronger together, and we will achieve our goals together. Thank you. Merci. Right now, I want to uh, invite Premier Ford to welcome you to New Brunswick. <laughs> and uh, we appreciate you being here today, and, and we'd like to uh, have some comments uh, from your visit here, Premier Ford. Well, thank you so much, Premier Higgs, and I, I want to thank uh, the Premiers from the Atlantic Provinces for, for hosting us today. I want to also thank the Federal Minister, Dominic LeBlanc, uh, for sitting down today and having a, a great conversation. And as uh, Premier Higgs was saying, we, we have uh, a real, we've had a real productive meeting talking about uh, uh, multiple uh, Amounts of the areas that we, we share in common. Uh, healthcare is the number one priority, uh, along with ourselves and all premiers across the province and along with the, the federal government. We look forward to having a, a collaborative uh, relationship with the federal government. This, this is a Team Canada approach that we, we need to take. As uh, all, all the premiers here have discussed, you know, when someone walks into an emergency room, be it in Halifax or Moncton, anywhere across this country, all the way up to Victoria and Vancouver and everything in between, uh, they don't want to be sitting there for 10 to 12 hours. Uh, the backlog surgeries, they don't want to be waiting forever for a backlog surgery. We're working uh, collaboratively together. We're going to come up with a strong solution that works for everyone in Canada. But again, uh, we can't do it alone. We need the support of the federal government. Uh, had a phenomenal conversation uh, with with uh, the Minister uh, LeBlanc today, and he wants to work with us. Uh, we, we all know Minister LeBlanc. He's done a great job in working with all the Premiers. Uh, but I, I did mention to him, uh, you know, I can't have a, a conversation alone. Uh, this, this needs to uh, be with all Premiers from all provinces and territories to sit around the table 
and come up with a solution. Uh, because doing the, the same over and over again, throwing billions and billions of dollars at a solution uh, and, and keeping the status quo is just not working. Uh, we also need the partners from the healthcare sector. Every single CEO I've talked to from the largest hospitals in this country, uh, talking to doctors, talking to nurses, uh, the status quo is not working, folks. We need to be creative. Uh, we need to come up with ideas from the sector. Uh, not, not just us sitting around the table uh, having a conversation, but it's the sector that matters. And we're going to work hand in hand uh, with our CEOs of, of the hospitals and, and the docs and nurses, anyone who's involved in the, in the sector, to come up with real solutions that we can deliver uh, great, great health care in a rapid fashion. And uh, again, not, not sitting in an emergency room for, for 12 hours to be seen. I'm very, very confident uh, working with the, the federal government. Uh, we're going to come up with a great solution to make health care. Uh, better and the best in the world right here in Canada across uh, the entire country from coast to coast to coast. So, thank you, Premiers. Um, we'll now proceed with questions from members of the media. Uh, there's a lot of people on the line, so we're going to try and do our best to accommodate, but we will not be getting to everyone. The reporters that are selected will have one question. You have the right to pose your question in the official language of your choice. <coughs> Nous allons maintenant procéder aux questions des journalistes. Les journalistes choisis aura une question. Vous avez le droit de Canadian Press. Well, you know, it, it's not about just just ourselves. We need to sit at the table with the federal government, with all the premiers, uh, and, and it, it's the same uh, common issues that we see across the country. Again, uh, no matter uh, the conversation with Premier Houston or Premier King or Premier Higgs or myself, we're seeing the same issues. Backlog or emergency uh, Departments. When you're, you're pulling in and you're, you're going to be sitting there for 10 to 12 hours, that's unacceptable. Uh, backlog surgeries is unacceptable. <clears throat> How do we come up with the root cause of, of the problem? But do you know who can give us these answers and help us? Are the people in the sector, the healthcare sector. They're the experts. And uh, I really rely on them in, in Ontario. And I, I know my, my colleagues rely on them as, as well. So we'll, we'll come out uh, as a group and uh, give you a strong, strong plan. Uh, to make sure we deliver better health care because again the status quo is not working here in canada right across the the country but with collaboration cooperation uh amongst all all the provinces and territories and the federal government uh we, we're going to come up with uh, a great uh, solution to make sure we deliver the best health care in the world thank you very much uh, we're going to go to the phone line to robert benzi with the toronto star Robert? <laughs> I didn't hear that question, Robert. As we wait for Robert, we're going to go to Jacques Poitra from CBC. Jacques Poitra, CBC. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you, Jacques. Please proceed with your question. Hi, Premier Higgs. Uh, I'm just wondering if you've um, had any meetings or looked had any discussions or looked at any proposals to um, put anything, do anything from the private sector that's not currently being done by the private sector in the healthcare system in New Brunswick. Well, I think one of the um, one of the advantages here of having meetings like this is certainly the discussion that across this country we have a healthcare system in crisis. So for me, you know, all options are on the table to understand what what are best practices, uh, not only throughout our country but in other countries. Uh, what can we do differently in in relation to how we deliver services and and who can do it best? Um, I, I think we've we've many times been stymied by 
you know, one political party after another that says, you know, you do this and I'll, I won't do it when I get elected. Yeah. Um, and that's why health care continues to erode in the country. And we don't, we don't get the changes we need. So I think what we certainly collectively agreed on is that this is a, this is a I will for, you know, in, in, in former life, a customer service focus, but a, a patient focus in relation to what are people feeling and seeing when they go to the, to the doctor or to receive health care. Our goal is to ensure that that experience is a positive one and it gets the results we need. And we don't have the stories that we have heard of late and, and the critical nature of services being provided by people that are doing their very best to do for what's right for their, for their uh, colleagues. So, yes, things are going to change, and yes, that could be in a different form, and I don't know what that's going to look like, but I want, I want medical professionals to give us their best ideas, uh, not just more of the same and, and hope for the best, but to give their best ideas to move forward in a constructive way that sees results for our patients and our citizens. Thank you, Premier. Pascal Rochnog, Radio-Canada. Oui, bonjour. Yes, hello. My question is, uh, Premier Higgs, can you please give us maybe one or two specific data on topics that were uh, um, in your discussions? Maybe you didn't agree on things to do concretely, but the ideas that were discussed today, can you give us one or two topics, maybe, maybe specifically? Oui, absolument, oui, je peux le faire. Les collègues ici peuvent ajouter à cela. Dans un cas, on le sait, par rapport and, and I think the idea that we saw that during the pandemic, each and every one of us had to really move quickly in terms of freeing up space in hospitals. And, and I think we've, we've, we've maybe allowed that to lapse a bit over the last year, and, and that needs to be a focus so that not only do seniors get better care, but they get it in a place that delivers that care that they deserve and they need. And, and I think going, going in that direction is something we've learned from the past, and, and we need to make that happen. The other source in, in terms of um, ideas is in relation to who else can deliver the type of care that individuals need? So right today, the ERs are, are, are the be-all, end-all. So go to the emergency room because it's there. Um, but is, are there alternate care? And we've all talked about this, and we're all doing it in some form, where we have different, different health care professionals, whether it be paramedics, whether it be pharmacists, uh, whether it be nurse practitioners, uh, but, but different people being triaged right at the door in the ER and then deciding, okay, you could go maybe to a clinic tomorrow. Because we also know that doctors don't want to have a sole source of practice uh, like they've had in the past. In New Brunswick, our sole source of practice is around 46%. The national average is 72, 17%. And in that scenario, you say, you know, today on the work-life balances, physicians want to have more time uh, in the clinic with their colleagues and to serve patients when they need. So going forward, it may not be one-to-one, -one, like I've got a doctor for life, but you could have a clinic for life. And you could have a clinic anywhere in the province when you need it. So the goal is to provide the service by the right professionals, not necessarily the same professionals. And I say, is that a goal? It's a challenge that we have right now because people, you know, doctors work differently. The, the work-life balance is, is, is part of their life too. And you can't blame them for that. And so we need to have a practice that works for, for both our healthcare professionals and the, the patients that, that need, need the support. Thank you. Yeah, if I can just add, uh, Marissa, yep. I just, uh, you know, it's important to get together for conversations such as this uh, because, as uh, Doug suggested and Blaine, uh, some of the challenges we all fa uh, face uh, collectively as provinces are similar, but our abilities to provide some solutions are a little bit different. For So Doug, for example, is trying to provide health care for 17 million Ontarians. Uh, in Prince Edward Island, I'm trying to find a reasonable solution for 165,000. So fundamentally, how we deliver that will probably be a little bit different. Uh, you know, I have the ability, because we're a small jurisdiction, that we brought together all of the leads of every professional service, essentially, in healthcare, to sit around the table in the cabinet room and say, uh, you know, this is the uh, human resource that we have at our disposal. How can we deliver health care a little bit differently, uh, changing the scopes, etc.? That's probably a little more complicated for Doug to do because of the size and volume of people that he has. But I think fundamentally everybody in, in Canada, everybody in Prince Edward Island would like to have access to health care when they need it 
as close to home as possible and to get so to get that uh, health care uh, in a reasonable time frame and that's what we're trying to do all of the challenges notwithstanding but but how Blaine does that or how Tim does that and Doug or Dennis and everybody else will probably look a little bit different but what we talked about were, were those fundamentals of how we could how we can achieve that for our citizens and I, I don't think it's outrageous for a Canadian to want to go get access to health care service without having to be in the wrong lane or in the wrong line or have to wait for 15 hours to get it uh, when we have professionals who work within the service who can provide it. So I think that, that's what I took most from the, from the conversations today. Sure, yeah. Thank you. I mean, we live in a great, great country that people all over the world want to want to move to and want to live here. And, and uh, there's even a bunch of provinces that are almost as nice as Nova Scotia. <laughs> <laughs> but so there's a significant discussion around accreditation of those healthcare professionals that were trained in another jurisdiction, another part of the world, even. And how do how do we how do we make sure that we can we can get them accredited here and, and maintain the, the, the healthcare outcomes, the standard of care that we Canadians have come to expect. So I think there's a there's a big discussion to take place there. Uh, it's taking place in each of our provinces with each of our respective colleges. Uh, but I think it's a it's a, it's a discussion that should be taking place on a on a national level as well. So uh, accreditation a big big part of the discussion because people want to come and live in Canada and they want to practice uh, their healthcare skills here. Thank you, Premiers. We're going to go on the line to Robert Benzie again from the Toronto Star. Are you there, Robert? <laughs> Robert, if you're not there, we'll go to your colleague, Dustin Cook. Robert from Global TV. No questions? Okay. Adam Harris, Brunswick News. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, just wanted to follow up on the question about public-private partnerships. Um, Premier Higgs, um, are there options in New Brunswick for that? Um, Ontario's plan hopes to e ease health care pressures by increasing um, publicly covered surgeries at private clinics. Um, do you see that happening in, in in New Brunswick, or is, is it even a possibility? Well, I think, Adam, um, you know, we need to keep uh, everything as a possibility in, in relation to how do we improve health care, but it has to be valid in that in that sense. And I, and I think I want to make it very clear that, you know, what we're talking about here is publicly funded health care. So it, it's not a case of um, health care not being publicly funded and, and people getting the service um, as, as they can possibly get it at the, in the best format they can get it. So that would be the, the point that, again, let's, let's work on, on what is the best health care, and then let's figure out how we can actually uh, ensure that's available to, uh, to all citizens. So um, we leave the door open. I know, uh, and uh, Premier Ford may want to talk to their current plan, because I know that they have recently introduced a health plan, and in, in, I believe uh, with a, a new uh, payment method. Mm -hmm. Thank you. On va procéder avec M. Alexandre Boudreau, l'Acadie Nouvelle. Monsieur Premier ministre Higgs, Acadie Nouvelle, Mr. Higgs, is there other things that the other provinces do in terms of health care that New Brunswick should do? I'm sure there are. And, and you know, we learn about that sometimes, uh, obviously, through discussions like this, and we talk about, you know, managing health care, um, let's say discharge and admissions in hospitals, and how we can maximize that so that we keep the space to keep people moving but but manage the system uh, for some time I've talked about the, the that we have an unmanaged health care system for the most part individually managed in individual departments or individual doctors or individual hospitals and and we don't learn from each other in terms of, of what is shared and, and of a best practice nature so I, I think that we we don't have a formal process and of, of actually sharing uh, what others learn so these meetings are important and the meetings of our, you know, our staff to meet together to talk about healthcare. So when our ministers meet uh, with their colleagues across the country and talk about healthcare practices, that's when these details kind of come out. And uh, and I think that that's those are very valuable to do that and and to do them more routinely as we all learn, yeah. because we can share our results and and you know we we don't have to reinvent the wheel. But what we do have to know is that our wheel needs to be reinvented. So if you got a process that works, great. Let's emulate that across the country. But if you have a system that is broken. 
And, and I, I guess I, I use that phrase because we've, we've witnessed it across our country. It's not unique to any one province. It's consistent. We've all had our challenges. COVID has only um, you know, heightened that. But uh, the time to make a difference is now. There's a sense of urgency now. And the status quo is just not acceptable anymore. Thank you. My yeah. apologies. Um, it's Dustin Cook with the Globe and Mail. So, Dustin, if you have a question. And I guess, Bruce, I just want to read it because I think some of my colleagues, and I know, Jimmy Ford, I think you wanted to comment. Go ahead. Yeah, I've, I've, I've never seen in, in the last four and a half years, I, I've been Premier, uh, everyone focused, including the federal government, on one area. And uh, as, as Premier Higgs said, you know, best practices. That came up to our, in our conversation uh, today, actually. We need to start sharing best practices, better ways of doing things. What, what are you hearing in New Brunswick? What are you hearing in PEI and, and in Nova Scotia? And, and really uh, support each other. That's never happened. I've ne never seen everyone as coordinated and focused uh, for the entire country as we are now. And, you know, I, I think I can speak on, on behalf of our, our premiers here and all, all premiers. Uh, we want to deliver the best health care system in the world. We have the best country in the world. And uh, with all the collaboration, cooperation with the sector, uh, with the federal government, and with all the premiers, I'm confident we're, we're going to get there. And we're moving as quickly as possible. There's never been a focus on health care in the history of this country like it's happening right now. Everyone working together. We'll get it resolved and uh, we'll, we'll get there and we'll deliver better health care to the people of uh, this great country. Thank you. Jean Laroche, CBC Nova Scotia. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, I'm just wondering, you keep talking about not, not having to reinvent the wheel, but the wheel needs reinventing, and I'd like to hear from, uh, certainly from uh, the Premier of Nova Scotia, uh, what's standing in the way of the kind of innovation that you and the other premiers are talking about? Because I don't think uh, the federal government would disagree that things need to be done differently. Yeah, th thanks, Sean. Um, I, I think the answer is there's less and less standing in the way. Uh, more and more people are understanding that we have to we have to do things a little differently. And I think in the past you've had different. Uh, if you think across healthcare the spectrum. Different, different groups, different professions would be a little territorial over what, which services they could provide and maybe nobody else should be able to provide them. But I think you're seeing scopes expand, you, like you're seeing pharmacists do more, you're seeing you know, paramedics do more. And I think you're seeing a level of collaboration uh, and acceptance of the necessary collaboration, at least, across, across the spectrum where the different, uh, different trainings, different disciplines can, can support each other all in the name of better health care for Nova Scotians, better health care for Canadians. So, so I think there's less and less uh, standing in the way, and this is kind of a, a new thing. It's just kind of getting all the different groups at the table to talk about w what can be done. And, and I think uh, Premier, Premier Ford uh, said it might have been yesterday or today, but uh, you know, the, the, a, lot of, a lot of the solutions come from the people on the, on the front line. So certainly in, in Nova Scotia, I would expect that, that Nova Scotians would start to see and hear about more pilot pro projects that have come from a doctor who has an idea or come from a nurse who has an idea uh, or a pharmacist who has an idea. And we'll start to say, well, let's, let's try that. Let's try things because there's, a, there's, a, there's an open-mindedness, I think, there's, that, that creates an opportunity. And I think that opportunity is, 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 pretty, is pretty fresh and pretty new uh, in the way things go. So there's less and less in the way. Uh, the federal government uh, has a role to play, certainly, around immigration for healthcare professionals. Maybe, uh, maybe in the credentialing uh, aspect, certainly in the funding aspect. So uh, there's there's a, there's a, a seat for all kinds of different groups at the table, and, and I think all kinds of different groups are willing to take that seat now. Thank you. We're going to go to Brittany Spencer from CBC PEI. Hi there. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you for taking my questions. My question is for Premier King. Um, 
Now, uh, we've been hearing that the status quo cannot continue, uh, and that on PEI, the healthcare system here is dealing with staffing shortages, uh, closures of ERs and clinics, and doctors leaving. And so I'm wondering whether PEI has reached a crisis level within the healthcare system here, and what the first steps, the priority steps are that, that PEI needs to take to, to, to get the province away from that. Uh, well, hi, Brittany, and thanks for the question. Uh, I, I think... Uh, PEI is not unique in the in the entire federation. I think there's uh, uh, call it a crisis or, 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 or significant challenges, whatever the the words you you want to use. I think we have uh, uh, been realizing for the past uh, year and a half uh, essentially that uh, we're not able to sustain the delivery system of healthcare that we have uh, in, in the province. Uh, that's why we are bringing together all of the professionals to say. This is essentially, this is the roster of people that we have. Uh, how can we best utilize those people uh, within the system? First of all, to make the system easier for those in the system who are stressed and for the end user who's trying to get in to access health care. Uh, and I think that's a fundamental change in the approach. Uh, I think our government has resisted any temptation to come up with a political uh, knee-jerk quick fix to try to put one problem uh, in the basket while creating 15 others on the other side. Uh, so I think that that's been something that we've been working on for a long time. But I really think that uh, the people are much further ahead uh, than, 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 uh, than perhaps we've given them credit for in the past. People are looking for access to health care services when they need them. Uh, and uh, it used to be that you needed a family doctor to be at the head of that. Uh, and now that is changing, and we're trying to build a team-based uh, approach, uh, a collaborative care model, so to speak, where you're uh, maybe you have access to a doctor, but it's through a clinic, and there's going to be a whole lot of other people uh, available within the system to give you some of the services that you that you may need. Uh, and it's going to fundamentally be different than what we've become reliant upon. But I think when we talk here about the status quo not working or the system being broken or whatever. Uh, we want to talk about is that we can't keep doing and trying to pretend we can do things that we can't do. Uh, so uh, I think it's my job, it's the Minister of Health's job uh, to lead those discussions with the health professionals, which we have been doing. Uh, you know, but this isn't a political problem, it isn't a financial problem, so to speak. Uh, it's a system delivery model that we have to be open to changing. And like my colleagues here, I'm open to any good suggestion that can come forward from the health professionals who work within the system uh, to make it better for uh, the end user who, who needs to access that. So I, I learned a lot today. I've been learning a lot over the past couple of years. Uh, and uh, we continue to learn, but I think the delivery of health care in PEI and across the country is going to be fundamentally different than it used to be, And uh, uh, but I think it needs to be, and it's responding to the realities of today and tomorrow. Thank you, Premier. We're going to go back to the phone line. Helene avec uh, le droit le soleil. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for taking my question. My question is actually for all four Premier. Um, Ottawa wants to establish a dental care program, and one of the options being contemplated would be that Ottawa would directly reimburse dentists without going through uh, provinces. So if each of you could tell me where your province stands, do you agree with such a path? Where do you stand on dental care uh, by Ottawa in general? Thank you. you want me to start and move down the road? Well, I think... Uh, I don't want to be overly boastful, but I think Prince of Rhode Island probably is the best dental care program in the country, and I've been urging uh, Dominic LeBlanc and the Prime Minister and others to, if they want to make a further investment in that from a federal perspective, that they should work within the system uh, that we have in place and to help strengthen that. I'm encouraged that the federal government wants to spend some money in this important area, but, uh, you know, we've heard a lot about creating wheels and recreating wheels. Uh, in this particular case in Prince Edward Island, I think we have a really, really strong model, and I will continue to encourage my federal colleagues uh, that that money should be put into the system that we have in place to expand the coverage and the offering, and I think we could serve Islanders best if we do that. So I guess we've spent this first while, and we've been spending a lot of energy over the last number of months and years to talking about a, a crisis in our current health care system. So um, adding more to it at this point in time would see a, a bit presumptuous in the sense of, of let's, let's get what we've worked on for so many years uh, fixed. The, the other aspect of, of, um, of looking at a new program, of course, is that 
you know, if the federal government put it in place and yes, they're going to fund it initially, well, then what happens to it then four or five years down the road? Is it something then that just gets handed to the to the to the um, the provincial government? Yeah. So I, I would say that firstly, we need to really focus on the task at hand and not not to create new ones, um, and let's get a handle on our healthcare system across this country. Secondly, in terms of a dental plan, let's understand what it really means, um, not 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 the the headline first and the details second so that we actually know what it what it'll provide and what the cost will be ultimately and can we provide what is being planned. Because right now we have a health care service that is not providing what was intended. So my certainly focus would be on, on our current situation and let's get it fixed first. Well I concur with uh, Premier Higgs on ongoing funding, no matter if it's, it's child care, and I think we all ended up getting a pretty good deal on child care, no matter if it's CHT. Uh, or, or the dental plan. We need ongoing funding. Uh, the worst thing you could do is give a chunk of money and all of a sudden get cut off in the next two or three years. Uh, we have a, 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 a pretty good dental plan for um, seniors right now that uh, lower income seniors, over $100 million, we'll put towards that plan. We, we want to expand on that, enhance that plan, but uh, I'm, I'm open. I'm, I'm open to uh, seeing what the federal government uh, has to uh, put on the table, but again, um, let's let's focus on on health care. Uh, that's that's a number one priority, and uh, yes, dental kind of falls under that, and uh, we we need to uh, continue working on the health care plan to make sure we nail that down, and then we can move on to the the dental plan as as well. Thank you, and I I, I certainly agree. Um, uh, the, the goal is admirable. I mean, improved dental care is, is, is significant. It's important to somebody's overall health for sure. So I certainly agree with the goal. Um, the, the details would be important. I wouldn't want to speculate on, on a rumor of how that may look. I'd, I'd rather hear directly on what the options are and why, why a certain option has been selected. And then, of course, overriding that is, is as has been expressed by my, by my colleagues, just the, uh, the longevity of the funding. Uh, because if it's if it's if if it's just to get a short-term headline and and uh, creates more funding issues and pressures down the road that cause other uh, elements of service delivery to have to decline to keep it up, then nobody wants to get there. So, so um, I'm interested certainly in the, having that discussion with the federal government about the, the range of options they're considering and and hearing hearing their assessment of which option is better. Thank you. Last question, Steve McKinley, Toronto Star. You know something? I, I don't know. I, I like the Toronto Star and Rob Benzie's a, a class act, but I'm not too sure what's happening over there right now. <laughs> we'll have to find out when we get back home. Uh, last question will now go to Aiden Chimandi from iPolitics. <clears throat> Nobody wants the last question. No one wants the last question. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Uh, go ahead. No, beside you. <laughs> Sorry. Good try. Uh, hi, Premiers. Um, we've heard a lot about health care, but I know uh, you mentioned that uh, energy security was another topic. Um, will you be, any of the Premiers be attending the uh, hydrogen conference in uh, Newfoundland? And what role did uh, hydrogen play in the energy security uh, discussions today? We, we will, actually. Um, so it, is, it turns out uh, the Chancellor's visit, I believe, going to Montreal and then yeah. in the and Premier Ford, you're heading home to meet with the Fine. Chancellor. Um, my colleagues are here from Atlantic Canada because we're we're traveling together over for tomorrow to be in Steenville with our with our counterpart, to Premier Fury. So uh, yes, energy security is a big part of it. Hydrogen can be a big part of the future, and I think understanding, you know, how we how we connect all the dots for for improving and reducing carbon emissions and getting to a, a cleaner, greener environment. It's, it's, a, it's a process we're all undertaking and, and uh, looking at all options, and, and I think that's part of this, uh, part of our discussion today, but part of the, the meeting tomorrow. Um, I, I want to reiterate just one other point, because um, obviously understanding the cost going forward for energy and, and what that means to consumers throughout the, throughout the country is, is critical, and we're seeing that. And we're seeing it with the crisis in Europe and what that's done to instability in the marketplace, but the demands that, that Europe would currently have. Um, but another point that we, we also discussed, because it, it was, you know, we talked accreditation, we talked about the, the actual um, immigration policies, and we also talked about the current um, concerns about um, 
uh, drug availability, and, mm -hmm. and particularly for infants. And, and, uh, and so um, we've, we've agreed collectively that we want to understand our current inventory within our provinces, talking to the pharmacy associations, and understanding, you know, what, what is the criticality. And, you know, because in, in reality, we should be aware of that. Our healthcare professionals should be aware of that prior to it becoming a, a, a news story. Um, we should know if we're getting to a critical levels of, of, um, of critical uh, of drug supply. So um, we're all very keen to understand more about uh, what are the triggers, what are the critical drugs that we're watching, and where do they stand in terms of uh, supply. And I, I just uh, want to wrap this up by, by thanking uh, our, our premiers again for, for hosting me here. And I have to tell you, folks, the people of Ontario, the 15 million people, uh, first of all, I'd love everyone from the land of Canada to come to Ontario and visit, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, the 15 million people in Ontario, if you haven't been uh, out, out here, you've got to come out, and, and there's so many people from Ontario I've met, but the hospitality, they're salt-of-the-earth people. I absolutely love coming here. I love the people. I'm going to give you one example. Uh, my, myself, from Premier Houston. We went out for a bite to eat last, last night, and I went to a table and said hello, and and uh, this uh, lady and gentleman said, you know, next time you come here, you're coming to my place for dinner. You don't have to just <laughs> knock on the door. That's the type of people they are. They take the shirts off their back. You could knock on someone's door at dinner time. They'll invite you in. No questions asked. Uh, the salt of the earth, down to earth people. I love the Maritimers and uh, just can't wait to come back again. So thank you for your hospitality here, folks. See how much we agree on. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.